Hey everybody, Edo here, and in this league video, I am going to talk about my trip to Gen Con 50, 50th anniversary. Not my first trip to Gen Con, but another great one. And actually, I had written a sort of summary report, digest, I don't know what you call it, like reflection on the trip, and posted on my Facebook page, linking all the different people I met and stuff like that. Not even close to the number of people I met. But I was talking about sort of my emotional response and just sort of how I was feeling after the show. And a number of people asked me if I could include that in a video. So so here I am. I like to listen to the people who ask me to do things. Anyway, the biggest point I think at the top of my post was how whenever I go to a board game convention, um, I always have this mix of emotions. One emotion is incredible inspiration. You're seeing all these new games and products and people doing cool stuff, and whether it's indie or big publisher, all over the place. There's just so many people doing so much cool stuff. The component quality, the art, you're just like, yeah, this is awesome. Board gaming is awesome right now, and there is so much cool stuff out there. So much awesomeness, right? And that's really inspirational. You, you want to like do more and be in it and be a part of it. On the other hand, there's this sort of, I call it melancholy or, or deflation around this idea of where you're just like, man, everyone's doing so much cool stuff. It's so much better than what I do. You know, they're at show. Look at these groups at shows. I'm not at, I don't have a booth. They have a booth. Look at the quality of these components. They're so incredible. Look how much fun this is. Look at the fans. Look at the art. Look at how everyone else is doing so much awesome. It's like just this flip side of the coin where half of it's inspirational and the other half of it's sort of, you know, again, this deflation, depressing where you're just like, what am I even doing here? As a hobbyist, how am I a part of this? Am I relevant? You So you see big reviewers, big, you know, all, just all, all this stuff and you just, it's hard. And actually, I've always felt there that way. Every convention I ever go to, I always walk away both like inspired to do stuff and also like, what am I even doing? doing being part of this group i mean it's like really this feeling i always have and what surprised me actually was a number of people who responded to my post agreed with that feeling and, and hadn't heard somebody express it before but i really feel it every time and actually there's this incredible i'll link it in the in the in the description two minute video uh, uh from ira glass who does this american life and he talks about taste and what it's like when you see great work uh, but you know your work isn't that great yet. Um, and he he talks about it in a really inspirational way. So I'm going to link that. I highly recommend you watch it. It's two minutes, worth the two minutes. If you're a creator, you absolutely should watch that. It's it's stellar. Uh, and, and it's really just like what he... I, I think it was just an interview, and it's just showing his the text of the interview while he's talking. So it's not even really a video. But so... <laughs> You know, I always feel that way, and um, what I was thinking about and, and with the rest of the post is I just wanted to talk about all the different ways that I engage with the board gaming space and what it meant to me at the show, um, and just share it. Uh, you know, this isn't like a review rundown of the games, um, but but certainly uh, some of the feedback and thoughts I had from Gen Con. Uh, also, that feeling of Normally, when I feel that way coming out of a convention, I've had time to talk with people about it, think about what I want to do next, think about what I'm not going to do, and sort of digest it. Gen Con's so crazy and so busy and so much is going on that I really couldn't this time. So I just sort of left in this haze, which is why I think I wrote the big post. Like, normally I don't, but like, I didn't even have a chance to, to talk much about it um, at all. And so... Um, so for me, though, going to the convention, um, I really go as, as, as four different people, perhaps, and like, it's sort of crazy when you think of it. So first, and, I, and this is just the order, of, if you've read the post, this will be familiar. But so, in one hand, I'm just a gamer. I just love games, and seeing games is fantastic, all the new re releases. I didn't get to play Photosynthesis from um, um, Blue Orange Games. I was excited about that. I did see King Queen Domino. That's going to be super cool. Um, and just every booth, Pandemic Legacy 2 uh, is one I was looking at as people were messing around. But all the miniatures, the it's just so much amazing gaming. This is like, 
you know, what an incredible time to be playing games and watching the industry grow. But I had this little Thursday night, I had this incredible moment as just a gamer and a fan. And so I found myself at the yellow party after the, the beginning convention, and it was because um, I had reviewed a game once, and they, I got on the list, and, and whatever. So I'm at this party, and I'm talking with Mike Pascal, who I had done the Q&A with, uh, which you should watch. It's a distribution. It's a great Q&A. And I'm standing there talking to him like this, right? And I look to my right, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's Bruno Cathala. Eh. Uh, now, I'd actually, I've seen him before. I've shaken his hand before. So it wasn't like, boom. But I was just like, oh, he's, he's just, you know, he's right over there, just chatting. Oh, oh, he's chatting with Bruno Fiduti. <laughs> They're just chatting together like two French guys. And uh, now, and actually, I had just met Bruno downstairs because he was at doing a Gama Sutra promotion, which is funny in and of itself. So I shook his hand earlier in the day at on the floor. And so, you know, whatever. And I turned a little more. And we're just talking. We're talking a 60-degree viewpoint in my angle. So not even, like, wide. Like, right? One guy over. It's, it's Antoine Bausa. You know, the three of them just chatting. And actually, I've never seen Antoine before. Um... I mean, seen his games and stuff, but actually IRL. Um, so I certainly wanted to shake his hand, and I sort of waited, away to it. And eventually I sort of walked over and said hello. And it's interesting because he knows me a little, I guess, from the internets, but because when Liftoff, the first game I ever made, uh, Murder of Crows was, I guess, the first design, but Liftoff was the first Pencil First Games, I had asked him online if he would be willing to let me send him a copy. Because I... I really love his designs, and I want to send him a copy. And he said yes. And then I, I've since sent him other games. But, so, you know, he, he, he remembered we were chatting. And, you know, we look a little alike. Um, we have a long nose and big long face and black hair with a ponytail. We're about the same height. And so everyone was sort of in French, like, chuckling. Like, oh, you know, I can't do a good French accent. But it was funny that we were sort of like siblings. Um, but anyway, I got to meet them. I said, you know, hello. Thanks for... The, the amazing games. It was just a super cool fan moment. Uh, uh, that was awesome. But then Bruno Fiduti was like, hey, are you going to Nerd Night? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you know where it is? I was like, no. But he's, he had a map and he, he said, well, you want to go? And I was like, sure, let's go. So the two of us left the party and walked Oh, I think I like text Emily like, I'm walking to a party with Bruno Fiduti right now. This is incredible. Um, but so it was just cool. And then we got to Nerd Night. If you, Nerd Night is incredible. J.R. Honeycutt, it's uh, for charity donations to orphans and other um, children. But it's a great time. It's open to anyone. Uh, there's an auction. But everyone's just gaming. And I saw so many different people from the industry. Um, it was, you know, the that sort of, there's this growing group of sort of they're not not everyone's at the same level in terms of their design or publishing but there seems to be this wave of cooperation and engagement from from sort of the new developers new publishers people doing product you you don't see as many of and this might be states us centric but you don't see as many of the larger publishers getting involved like you would and maybe if you went to a uh, speed dating or something like that but at, at nerd night there's really just a great crowd and community and it's just incredible for me uh, and i think anyone to start connecting and talking one of the values to going to these events and being part of gen con or going to conventions is just getting to meet and talk with all the people doing great stuff everyone's super great in the game industry in terms of chatting and being available and playing games like there's always an excuse to hang out and talk with people so i just I really enjoyed, that was the best night for me of the con, um, but then other nights were great too, and then after that I went and I spoke with Keith Mateka um, for like three hours afterwards about what he's going through and the success of role player and things like that, so it was just an incredible night. And also, so that, that was sort of the gamer, and then I played some more games, and I, I just, being a part of, of seeing all the new games and talking with designers and just being able to sort of be a fan at Gen Con is incredible. They had this super cool event at the stadium as well where they had gaming and sort of this throwback to the original Gen Con. And it was really a great Gen Con. They do a really nice job and it didn't feel too crowded. So next year, get your pass. So but that's me as the, the gamer, but then there's me, the game maker, Kickstarter creator. And that was an opportunity to just 
see new creators like Manny and Nate who did Dice Throne and what they're doing, talk with friends in the league like Peter and Brad. Um, I got to connect with other Kickstarter creators. It's just always awesome to listen and talk to Kickstarter creators about what they're doing and how they're looking at it at uh, Andrew Petterspiel, Spiel, I think. Just a number of guys who and gals who I haven't, I don't talk to as much, but getting to compare notes, like the comparing notes at a convention on the Kickstarter side is super valuable. I also got to talk to my uh, Panda printer who I, I've worked with. I got to talk with Watts Games who I print with. Uh, the majority of my stuff is through Watts, but I got to connect with the people that I work, work with and talk to when I'm doing printing, which is incredible, as well as just teammates. I got to hang out with Christopher Hamm, who designed Legendary Creatures, Keith Mateka. I got to see just so many different um, people who I've worked with on products and projects. Ben Schulman, who's done lots of work, Andy Ashcraft. So really, there's so many, everything's distributed. It's digitally distributed. So being able to work and see all these different um, Kickstarter creators and connect with them was incredible for me. So I, you know, in a way, I got on... I, it seems like I'm just going through a litany of people I met with, and I don't know how helpful that is. But again, as a creator, I guess if anything, going to cons is super valuable because you can connect and compare notes with other people doing Kickstarters and, and creators. The other interesting experience for me was just sort of being there as a reviewer. Uh, I had a press badge and getting to see a lot of the stuff and stopping by booths and just sort of having that perspective of um, content creator and speaking with other reviewers was interesting. This is sort of this weird prism where, you know... I play games, I make some games and publish, I do the review stuff. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not above, you know, stopping by the, 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 the Dice Tower booth and shaking hands with Tom, Sam, and Z. Like, those guys are awesome. And I also um, stopped and saw um, uh, Scott and everyone doing the board game geek stuff, which is incredible. There's, there's so much awesome content coming out from those folks. Um, and then you just see lots of content creators and reviewers, small and big, right? You'll see like Undead Viking or Game Boy Geek, but you'll, um, you'll then just bump into new reviewers who are getting games and trying to move around. I, I, I bumped into, uh, Board to Death or Board Game to, uh, Luca, and just, it's incredible to connect with all these people. Good news for you all. <laughs> I signed up tons of Q&A, so I'm looking forward over the next month to just be doing q a's with a lot of really interesting people so many stories so many ways into the industries so many different angles it was super cool um and then you know the last note i had in my little write-up was just about being part of this incredible community this supportive community i can't emphasize enough the goodwill like you see some drama over here and some drama over there and you know i i sort of like to triangulate conversations so it's interesting to me to see who who's upset at who, and, oh, that person did this, or can you believe that, and, you know, like, that stuff's fun, but I think it's a small percent of everything. I really think there's just so much goodwill and great people in, in the in the board game space and at Gen Con. I was, you know, it's so exciting, and even people I only got to bump into. One thing I'll say, whether you're, you watch this in your industry or you're somebody who is a Kickstarter creator or, 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 or backed one of my projects. If you see me, do not hesitate to introduce yourself to interrupt me to stop by. I, I love, I don't necessarily remember everyone's name and face. Like in particular, I know everyone through their like avatar. Like you're not on video as much as I'm on video. So like, I'll look at you and may not recognize you immediately. Like my brain's trying to like, you know, a lot of people come up and say, hey, hey, I know how's it going? And I'm like, I think I should know who you are, but your name pass is facing you. Like, it's an awkward moment for me, but that awkward moment doesn't outweigh how awesome it is to talk to backers, how awesome it is to get feedback and hear about what you like about my Q&As or what you like about my reviews and what you don't. It's so valuable. The feedback is awesome and incredible and appreciated. And again, don't... You know, no matter who I'm talking to or what I'm doing, feel free, you know, and if I'm in the middle of something, I'll say hi and then, you know, let me finish what I'm doing. But I really do appreciate the hello, the handshake, the connection point, because so much of 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 making games is bringing fun and joy to people and, and with Kickstarters. And so much of the Q&A or these reviews or these Kickstarter basic videos is just trying to be helpful 
and hearing how it's working or it isn't or ideas or, or you know, again, hey, hey, that was a nice little Facebook thing. Could you do a video on it? Sure. You know, I got to know how many, you know, how exciting it is, but I'm, I'm always happy to, you know, so um, Gen Con 50 was awesome. It, uh, I think, will, there'll be more and more great conventions. I do think um, there is going to be a great consolidation coming up. You Having been around the video game industry and other industries, the um, everything's booming and everything's growing. I don't believe there's going to be a collapse, but what you're going to start seeing is more and more losers and more and more consolidation um, uh, as as the industry continues to grow and adjust. So I sort of think we're going to see a really big adjustment in the next 12 to 18 months. That's my prediction. But so cool to see what was going on and how many great games they were going. And, it, you know, it's it's like impossible to digest, honestly. So, you know, if you haven't been, <laughs> put it on your calendar for next year. You're, if you can't make it, there are local conventions. Go to cons, meet people, all that good stuff. Um, hopefully you found this entertaining. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Play some great games. Thanks.